welcome back for another video. Almost 2 million managers signed up on FP already and we've got a bunch of FPL teams to dig into in this video. These are some of my favourite videos because we get to look at how others are thinking and approaching the season. And to keep it as engaging as possible for you as the viewer, we've also got manager thoughts against each team to see where they're at essentially. Good to have some context as well. If you like your team rated in a future video, follow me on X, username is FPL Focal. Same username everywhere else by the way if you've got Instagram or TikTok etc. Link in the description. Lastly, at the end of the video, I've come up with a no Haaland, no Salah team to run through as well. Let's get into it. First team's from XYZ, and he says he's in a dilemma between Sun and Foden. He says Sun's got some good fixtures up front, but Foden played deeper in the Euros. And he says I doubt Pep would introduce him early in the league, but also want to cover City's attack. So first thing I'd say is to separate the Euros tactics, as we're talking about Pep and Southgate here. However, you make a good point on some players being introduced later. It's going to be one of the most important things to pay attention to as we near game week 1. Some managers might or might not want to give those players that were involved in the final game week 1 off. At the previous Euros, Saka was given game week 1 off, though it could have also been to take him out of the spotlight after the penalties drama. In my eyes, Foden's the better pick and he does free up 0.5 mil as well. The likes of Foden and Saka aren't on pre-season tours and they're going to join up with the squad much later. Palmer, Watkins etc will be fine as they barely played in the Euros. Zobasai is an interesting one, I've not seen him in many drafts. Slot does love a cam. Stang has got 20 goal involvements last season in 29 games in the league, 6 goals, 14 assists. I almost missed that you've got 0.5 mil on the bank as well, which is something I've done a few times before heading into game week 1. I like this approach because it keeps you flexible if a player rises in price. Let's say Sun blanks the opening couple of game weeks and Saka smashes it, rising to 10.1 mil, then you're not priced out with the extra money. FPL Cam's up next with a really well rounded team. He's got Sanchez in goal, he's only 4.5 mil, and I've seen him rumoured to be Chelsea's number one this season, but it's also been reported Chelsea are in for a new keeper. Very unfortunate situation for Petrovic, though it's true. Cam's is wondering whether to drop share to a 4.5 mil defender to save up funds. I'd say it's worth it here because Vardy's a non starter for me. He's 37 now, and he was an impact player for the majority of last season's games off the bench. In fact, he played 90 minutes once all season. I really like the Havertz pick, another one that's going under the radar. People forget just how good he was in the second half of last season. From game week 25 onwards, he blanked just three times and he started every game and he rarely came off early. 9 goals, 8 assists in 14 games, 1.2 returns per game. I would drop share and upgrade Vardy, or alternatively, if Xiao Padre is looking good by game week 1 and he's the same price as Vardy, he doesn't even need to spend more. Munoz is a solid option as well for 6 mil. Next up is Alex King. And he says, I'm unsure on Pereira. I don't know who's better for 5.5 million. He says he's not sure whether to include Salah either because he doesn't think Liverpool are going to do well this season. Yeah, there's not loads of 5.5 mil mids. Hudson Odoi is probably my favourite. They're going to want to avoid the double up of Gibbs White if you get him. I'd avoid the Spurs double up and drop one of Hikaru and Adogi as well. Spurs defence wasn't that great last season. And I'd definitely start Vardy over Barco. I agree on Salah and Liverpool in general being a bit of a question mark, though it is the Ipswich in Gaming 1. Barnes and Darwin too much money to have sitting on the bench, I'd look to downgrade them to cheaper options. I just did a video on the best cheap players which I recommend watching, and then spread that money around your starting 11 more. FPL Pingu says he's targeting shots on target bonus for players, and nailed is the main focus. I love this approach. It's become clear that lots of players are going to nudge extra points over the season as a result of the bonus points changes, and the keepers and defenders are going to be negatively affected which is where you've spent less money. I've fallen into the trap before of picking a player who, if they become nailed, are going to be FPL gold, and in the end they're not nailed. So this is essentially an expected minutes or X-Min's approach, a start and 11 of completely nailed players who are going to largely play 90 minutes as well. Hard to fault this one. No Palmer or a City attacker, the only criticism really, but you can't have them all. Lovely depth on the bench as well with Hudson Adoy and Mikalenko. I'd start Mikalenko over one of the 4.5 mil defenders. FPL Vol says he's stuck between Salah and Harwood Bellis versus Foden and Trent, and he adds, is it really worth to go without Foden and Trent just to get one good player? He also says, I'm too scared to go about Salah, but I need to offer Foden and my defence. In this case, I'd say Trent and Foden is easily the better combination than Harwood Bellis and Salah. First of all, you never want to start Harwood Bellis, so that's fine if you can stick him last on your bench, but the same applies to the rest of your bench here, you've got Barco and Winks. You never know when a player could be unexpectedly benched or not even in the squad, and you're going to be forced to sub Winks in, for example. I've noticed managers are becoming increasingly coy in their press conferences. A lot of them seem to have taken the position of giving away as little as possible not to give the other team an edge. So with the Foden and Trent combo, you get better bench depth, as you can bench a 4.5 mil defender, plus you've still got Haaland so you've got a captain available every game week. Set and forget Haaland captain is a sound strategy. 
A couple more, and then I'll run through the FPL draft that I've put together. A really unique team up next from Jesse. He's got Miguel Saliba, Vardy L. Trent, Gibbs White Foden, Sobosai Johnson, Armstrong Isaac, Harlan Verbruggen, Anderson Rogers, and Concert. And he says, This is a Gamic 1 bench boost, a Gamic 2 triple captain Harlan draft. He says, Still a lot of uncertainty, especially with the six and a half minute midfielders, but I like this strategy as an idea. Gamic 1 bench boost has always intrigued me, but I don't think I've actually had the bottle to do it, as we could get some surprises in Gamic 1. Foden could get Gamic 1 off, for example, as we said earlier. Rogers might not start. And I'd want a much stronger bench than this to consider it, as they've all got away fixtures, and it's a pretty low ceiling bench in my eyes. And this is a bit down to preference, but I'd never ever triple captain in a single game week. From a simple maths point of view, it makes sense to use in a double, because they play twice. So at a minimum, it's extra appearance points, and there's a massive chance of extra returns across two games. This season, due to FA Cup changes, we are going to get smaller and fewer doubles, but they'll still be there. This one's very much down to opinion, because I have seen the Gamic 1 bench boost pulled off successfully before, but it's not for me. If you do it, let us know how you get on. Snorl says he's made a team based on my first draft, and he's modified it a bit to get some of his personal shortlisted players in. He went no Haaland for obvious reasons, and no Salah, because he reckons he's on his way out, or he might fall off a bit this season. The name of the game for him is a solid, well-rounded team. So a few things immediately leap out here. It's the first no Haaland, no Salah team we've had here. It's a no premium draft basically, depending on if you want to count Palmer anyway. I'd never ever bench a player like Palmer by the way. He has to be in your starting 11, even if it's Man City game week 1. He scored against them in the same fixture last season actually. If you're starting Palmer, then someone like Kulis has to be benched, which is quite a lot of money to bench. You probably wouldn't want to start him in game week 2 or 3 either, away at Palace and then Man City. I think your defence could be improved, Anderson and Van der Ven both away fixtures in game week 1. If I had no Salah and no Haaland, I'd find a way to fit Trent and Foden in as well. Trent's cheapest price in 5 years and they've got the best opening fixtures of all teams, and Foden gives you a route into City's attack as well despite no Haaland. So I've had a crack at a no Salah, no Haaland team and I actually really like it, here it is. It's Miguel in goal, Mikalenko, Vardy on Trent in the back 3, Palmer, Foden, Gordon, Saka midfield, João Pedro, Isaac and Watkins up front. If you caught yesterday's video, João Pedro is pulled out of Brighton's pre-season tour so we'll have to see if he's back in training later and good to go by Gemic 1. If not, Rogers for 5 mil and Anderson for 4.5 mil, great bench depth. Rogers has bagged 3 goals in 2 preseason games so far, albeit pretty low quality opponents. Emery's had nothing but good things to say about Rogers, and after they signed him in January last season, by game week 29 he started 7 straight games. Though as I said earlier, a trap I've fallen into before is taking a chance on these players with lower expected minutes and ultimately left disappointed. Rogers definitely won't start every game anyway, they have made a few signings already. So this team has three sub-premiums, or whatever you want to call them, in Foden, Palmer and Saka, plus a heavy duty defence. Has anyone else considered a draft without Salah and Haaland? It is crazy how much the money spreads around without them, but one of the big trade-offs is captaincy. I always plan my captains weeks in advance, and Saka didn't feel like captaincy material much last season. Foden at times did, and Palmer certainly did, but I'd be more comfortable with a draft that's got Salah and Palmer, or Haaland and Palmer, as then you've got at least two options every week. Sorry I couldn't get through many of your teams, there was over 500 sent in in the end, and I tried to pick out a good variety. I read every comment, so drop one below of where you're at with your team. Thanks for watching, and see you soon for the next one.